Do you know that acai bowls originated from Brazil? I just found that out and there are also so many more Brazilian delights. Today's episode will be your introduction to Brazilian food you can find in Singapore. Food finders! So there's this cuisine that's super hard to find here, apparently less than 10 restaurants ever in Singapore, and that is Brazilian cuisine. So Joy, what do you know about Brazilian cuisine? Honestly, blank. I know that apparently acai bowls are actually from Brazil, or it's a Brazilian thing. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Okay, I also no, did not no, know that. What, 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 what? Churrasco. You mean like chur churros? No, no. Churros are Spanish. Oh my god! Don't add that in. Okay. Our first stop is gonna be this place that sells Brazilian crepes. I didn't know they had crepes, but apparently they do have crepes. So. Let's go. I did not even know that there was such a Brazilian place in the middle of Tanja Pagars. So we're gonna go check it out. Okay, let's go. So we're here at the first place inside the Icon Village. It's like a little kiosk that you did not notice that it was here, but it's called Beiju Express and they sell specifically Brazilian tapioca crepes and they just opened last December. So coming up to one year now here, uh, really excited to try their crepes. So. Okay, so I'm here with Darius, who is the owner and co-founder, right, of Beiju Express. Beiju is a, a Brazilian crepe that is made of hydrated tapioca flour. So it's originated from the north and northeast of Brazil, and it was invented like a few hundred years ago by a native tribe. Yeah, so they, they call it the food of gods because it was uh, helping them with uh, digestive issues. Oh, yeah. that's good to know. If you have digestive issues, you should come here and grab a crepe. Are you Brazilian? Uh, no, so uh, <laughs> me and my partner, we're not Brazilian. We were invited in one of our Brazilian friend home yeah. and uh, he let us try the, the crepe. We just loved it. So. Uh, and I, from that, you decided to start your own restaurant uh, yeah we always wanted to open a restaurant we made some research of course so like we saw that it was uh, getting popular in uh, countries like US Australia okay. Canada nobody was selling it in Asia yeah. so we thought why not bring it to Singapore well I might start trying a bit of the crepe because I'm hungry this one is the is a tapioca crepe uh, made with chicken it's quite chewy on the inside and uh, really uh, what what brings uh, it's, it's really the savory fillings and the sweet fillings that bring them to life. Oh my god, it's so good. So where, where are you actually from? Yeah, where are you from? Uh, I'm from France. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Oui, je peux parler un peu. Wow. Oui. <laughs> je suis Canadienne. I love it when I can like bring out my French on the, on the episode. Like what you said, it's a chewy, thicker crepe material than your French crepe actually. You know, yes, like yes, the it's typical definitely French. more chewy. I like the French crepes because they're more um, crispy, right? They can make it in a very crispy way. But this is like, it adds a lot of like a flavor to whatever ingredients is inside. Even though it's tapioca, and usually it doesn't have flavor. But I think the chewiness really blends well with the flavor. I'm really impressed. Before we move on to the next crepe, this is a local drink from Brazil that is super popular. It's called Guarana. Guarana. It's uh, maybe some similarity with the uh, Sprite. Easy, they oh! Is that a cherry on the... Is that a cherry? That's why I thought it was cherry coat. That's a good question, sorry. <laughs> I thought it was cherry. It's not cherry. It kind of tastes like cherry though, like a cherry Sprite. When Brazilian customers come, they, they order the Guarana drinks. They go for more simple crepes. In Brazil, they like to eat the tapioca crepes in a more simple way. To really feel the flavor of the crepes come out, right? That's Without right. the ingredients inside. They, they don't want to add too many fillings inside. Oh, yeah. so good. All right, so this is the... This one is the i bean here, so it's a vegetarian crepe. I would say the flavors are not as, you know, like interesting and nice, like more like umami as this one, but it is a lighter crepe. I taste the tapioca one more here, which is nice. The little pebbles within the tapioca crepe. Moving on to dessert. Ooh, so chewy. The tapioca crepe flavor is still the same, but just the ingredients are different. If you like the typical kind of chocolate, the sweet crepes that you get like in Singapore, I would say that this is like a, almost like a level up because you get the chewiness from it. I really like the chewiness of the crepe. Adds a different texture to whatever you're eating. It doesn't make it like super sweet or anything. It actually almost calms it down because there's no taste to the crepe itself. The savory crepes are so good and definitely if you're in the area working here, it's less than $10. It's pretty filling, I would say. So it's a great like lunch option or even like a dinner option with some other desserts as well. With the acai bowl, which I'm now gonna try for the second time. Mm. 
The blueberries are huge. It's so hard to find like really sweet, big, juicy blueberries here. So that's a plus point for me. Yeah, we're trying to use as much as possible fresh ingredients. Do you guys do any adaptation to the Singaporean market? Yeah, to like mm. Yes, definitely. So what I was saying earlier is that in Brazil, they like to eat the tapioca crisps in a very simple way. They don't even put any meat or fish inside. They just, just eat it very simple with oregano, cheese, tomato. And uh, so we thought that that would not be enough for the <laughs> Singaporean market. So we definitely adapted that this is all our recipes. Then that's it for here. <laughs> at Beiju Express. If you're in the area, definitely come check them out and have a bite of their delicious, savory or sweet crepes. Thank you for coming. <laughs> okay, so we're at our second stop of the day and this is a place that I've been to so many times and I never knew that it was Brazilian. So we're at Butcher's Wife, which is actually a Brazilian-inspired cuisine with some Asian flavors. Plus, they're also gluten-free, which I also didn't know because you really can't tell from the dishes that they serve here. And also, the best part, they serve natural wine, which is my favorite! So yeah, let's go check out some of the dishes that they have prepared for us. Ta-da! We have a very, very colorful spread here. Um, inspired by obviously the Brazilian colors and food dishes. I did not know that the Butcher's Wife is actually part of the Spa Esprit group. I also have Tim here who is the operations manager for the Butcher's Wife. He's gonna walk us through some of these dishes that we have here today. So this is our take on a Brazilian ceviche. Okay. Uh, so it's sea bass. Uh, we just cure it uh, with a little beetroot. You have some fresh cucumber and then the idea is you just uh, scoop it up with a spoon onto our tapio tapioca chip. This is our kind of signature Brazilian cheese bread. And then moving across here, we have our famous seafood mokieka. So inside we have some beautiful uh, octopus from Fremantle in Western Australia, some tiger prawns, uh, some sea bass, and it's a really light, delicious uh, Brazilian style stew based on coconut milk. And then finishing here is my favorite. It's the uh, Australian Wagyu rump cap. We can't forget the and orange wine. From France, it's uh, one of our founders wineries. And this is really, really fresh, particularly good with the uh, mokieka and the uh, ceviche. Excited to try. Thank you. Are we, are we trying first? Mm. This is really good. Wow, the texture. It's already got like a um, salty taste to it, but then with the salsa, it's just so refreshing. What a great appetizer. Let's try the ceviche. I think debatable. Uh, debatable. A bit of sourness in there. So it's pink because there's beetroot added inside. Oh shit, I dropped some. Using a tapioca chip like this is actually very different and never had that before. Usually with ceviche, you, ate, you eat a little bread, right? And it makes it very refreshing and crispy. I'm gonna have more because it's so delicious. So this is like, it looks like kind of like granola, like banana granola. Oh, it's like some sort of like... Actual granola? No, it looks like crispy bread. They burnt it though a little bit, like to get that smoky flavor. To give it more texture. Ooh. Oh, this is like really heartwarming on a cold day, just like today, where it's raining outside. I like that the stew is not too thick, which is not what I like. And then the fish inside is also really tender and juicy. This is uh, Tim's favorite, which is the Wagyu beef picanha. It's the char grill, char grill Wagyu picanha. It has a very smoky um, taste to the ladies' fing lady fingers. It's a nice um, compliment to like the um, the wagyu. I think it's really well cooked. It's not really salty at all. I think it's pretty like naturally char grill cooked, which is nice. Overall, I would say it's a great place to come with your friends for brunch. I know they have great brunch selections, and the dinner is great for sharing and for family. So recommend. <laughs> We're at our last spot of the day where they serve Brazilian barbecue in this like all-you-can-eat style called rodizio where they just carve the meat in front of you and you can kind of choose like what kind of meat platters you want. So we have like seven sides here and we also have the owner of the restaurant here. The one that's an orange is actually the Brazilian smoked tomato soup. This one took us uh, four hours to smoke it to give that uh, soury, smoky flavor in order to open your appetite so that you can eat more. The one in white is called pau de queijo which is Brazilian cheese bread and then uh, the one that looked like a teardrop is yeah. actually a Brazilian chicken croquette. It's called coxinha. The salad, on the other hand, is something that is uh, slightly unique. The Brazilian eat it because it's actually from a heart of a palm tree. So they slice this tree into two. In the middle, there's a there's a heart of the tree which is white in color. In Brazilian term, they call it palmito salad. So generally, when the, our customers sit down, the food will come one at one at a time, and they have a one and a half hours timing to try all the different cuts and barbecue that we will provide. So how, how do you know so much? Uh, uh, even start like a Brazilian 
I went to Brazil. I felt like it's a country where Asians in particular, we do not quite understand their concept. If I were to ask you, where's the second largest Japanese population? Do you know where it is? I'm gonna say Brazil. It's in Brazil. <laughs> Brazilian cuisine represents a big meat culture. Over there, they call it uh, churrascaria. Mm. It is definitely a lot more sour than soury than your usual tomato soup. To open up the appetite. Ooh, I can see that it's slightly. I think you should ask the expert over here. We actually use the rodizio style. Rodizio means to put it onto a skewer and turn. Yeah. I like the burnt kind of taste that I get from the garlic bread. It's a good mix with the tomato soup. So we actually had like some of the cheesy balls earlier, which was really good. A little bit harder to open. Oh, still the kind of cheesiness. After it's left a while, it gets a bit... A bit hard, right? Yeah. yeah. Still kind of like the mochi style that we've seen in the last restaurant as well. I think this is like a little bit cooled down now, so it's not as like cheesy or like the cheese is still there, but it's okay. Wait, we need to talk about this salad because this is the stuff that's in the middle of the palm okay. trees. I really want to know what this tastes like. It tastes like artichoke. That's really yummy. Wow. Which, what meat is this? Lamb. Boneless lamb, lamb leg. Go ahead. Oh, wow. Look at all the juices dripping down from that lamb. How long did it take to grill the whole thing? 10 to 15 minutes. I'm shooketh. Thank you. It's like rare almost, like medium rare. Mmm. Oh, very chewy. If you love lamb, this is a good lamb. I'm not a fan of lamb. Oh, no. It's very, like, um, lightly cooked, so it's not, like, cooked all the way through. Like, the lamb gamey taste is definitely still there. Is that chicken heart? No. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. It's like a huge-ass heart. Picanha. Ah, um, the Consider the, the main cut. Where are you from? Yeah, I'm from Brazil. And where are you from in Brazil? I'm from northeast. Recife, 2,000 kilometers from Rio de Janeiro. Okay, I'll look that up on Google after. Are most of the like rodizio style meat that comes out is like always rare to medium rare ish, or not always. Yeah. Sometimes come medium well, uh -huh. even well done. Depending but on they, what you choose, yeah, or the customer can request. Oh, okay. Wow, look at this red, red, red meat. Mm. Oh, it is very tender. Oh, it's like very easy to eat. This is one of the better steaks I've had. Oh. More me, more me, more me, more me. Oh my. What is this? This we call beef rum. This cut is from Brazil. I'm smelling the meat because the owner just now told us that um, Brazilian red meat have a certain smell. Yes. What's that so smell? It depends on the, the parts, but the Brazilian meat is grass fed. Mm. I would say that it's softer than the previous one. A little bit more raw-er, but I also taste the smokiness more here. This is the most smoky that I've tasted in all of the meats so far. I think there's a lot more um, textures to this piece of meat than the previous ones that I've had. And the flavors are also very different from the first bite to the last bite. Oh my god, it's a legit pineapple. Who yes. isn't a pineapple? Really pineapple. Like how did pineapple become part of the cuisine like or the Actually the pineapple helps to grease, you know? Mm. To digest the meat. Did you add like any seasoning to it or you just usually use cinnamon powder. Some people say it's the best. It's the best. Better than the meat. Yeah, so I feel offended. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come here and tell the chef that the pineapple is the best. Okay, for this. This is Malaysian pineapple, all oh, Philippines, I'm not sure. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. Oh. When you're... Okay, I don't like the pineapple because of the texture, you know, like the kind of soggy-ish texture. There is like the crispiness on the outside of the pineapple, which kind of solidifies it a lot more. It is a lot juicier, maybe less acidic than a, like a typical pineapple would be like. That makes it better than the normal pineapples. So come back here if you do love a good steak, 
meat and <laughs> so we just wrapped up the three restaurants that we went to today to try out Brazilian cuisine in Singapore I would have to say that there isn't a lot here other than the last restaurant which I really felt like they kind of went deep into the culture into the types of food offer there and then they were able to bring it to Singapore I do commend the first restaurant for you know loving the whole tapioca crepes and then bringing it to Singapore making it their own that's more of like an express style whereas the butcher's wife is more more of a casual bistro where they combine Brazilian flavors with Asian cuisine. My favorite restaurant with the most interesting concept has to be Casa Brasilia. It's just the concept, I haven't tried anything like that here. The meats are also great. You can see that the owner and the chef puts a lot of effort into what they're doing here, you know, bringing meats all the way from Brazil. So that's it for today. If you'd like us to check out other Brazilian restaurants or if you're a Brazilian in Singapore, leave a comment below like what do you think of the restaurant we went today. And if you have other cuisines that you want us to try, and you know test for you then let us know in the comments below but after you like and subscribe okay bye